just came back from the Chinese grocery store and I didn't even put any of my groceries back yet because I was like, I am going to shoot a haul video. Oh wait, so to start off with, I wanted to talk about, um, so I got this. You guys know what this is. I use this in my like daikon radish turnip cake special, but um, this is kind of like an Asian turnip. It's um, daikon radish. And when you cut it up and you just start cooking it, it smells absolutely horrible methane -y and all that jazz but as you cook them down they kind of the flavors really mellow out and it becomes more vegetal and it's lovely in stews and soups um the reason that i wanted to mention this and maybe you guys know what this is or not it's kind of dirty right now but um this is a lotus root and i'll probably get some uh, close-ups of that so Lotus roots are um, roots of the lotus plant. Sometimes you'll see like lotus plants in like Buddhist Zen gardens and they'll be on the ponds and there'll be flowers and whatnot. So this is the root of the lotus plant and it's lovely because it's very, uh, it's very crunchy. I would say the texture after you boil it down is similar to taro, but it's starchy, but it still has a good bite to it. And a lot of you guys might've had it in like stir fries or vegetarian stir fries. And um, if you don't cook it that, that much, this guy still has a really nice crunch to it. The reason that I mentioned these two guys first is um, I don't know how many of you guys watch Chef's Table and um, or, or have Netflix and watch Chef's Table, but this year the opening um, kind of episode was about this um, Buddhist nun and basically she's an amazing cook and she got flown over to New York and she was just showing temple food, temple cooking, which for some people might seem like uber bland or maybe boring, only it's not and she's amazing. Amazing. And what she ended up doing with the lotus root was that she sliced it up thinly and then kind of marinated it in like green tea and I guess this other red liquid and just it's one of those episodes where I think you guys are gonna love watching it because it really combines the philosophy of Buddhism and life and whatnot into food. So if you guys haven't watched it, go to uh, Netflix and then watch Chef's Table. So those are the vegetables. Next, I don't know if I mentioned it to you guys last time, but I kind of really want to start making like old traditional Chinese herbal soups. Um, my mom never really taught me too, too much of it, but um, one time I had to do kind of an article for, uh, for a magazine and we kind of did two recipes together and one of them was this papaya tremella soup. So tremella is something like this. I'll probably get a close up of that as well. And it just looks like giant like sponges, giant white sponges. And um, it's actually a fungus. I think it has a similar texture to um, like seaweed and it has a nice bite and crunch to it. But I think the papaya and the tremella, what it's good for is like sometimes in the winter when you get dry skin or whatnot, I think that this is good for it. Maybe don't quote me up on it because I still need to look up all of this stuff. So that's kind of, I think my next big project is to um, kind of research all of these Chinese herbs and what they are for and then kind of try to remake it because it is something in the kind of like the Chinese Asian cuisine that I don't really know that much about at all. So um, if any of you guys make a lot of Asian soups, feel free to you know send me the recipe or send me a uh, recommendation on uh, what to make and you know what it's for. Next, so Okay, this has been sitting in the car a little bit too long. So um, I actually use this in my um, beef chow fun recipe and it's five spice um, uh, tofu that has been pressed. So a lot of the times when you buy tofu um, for like vegan recipes or vegetarian recipes, they'll ask you to kind of put it in between two weights and then a paper towel and all that jazz and then you have to kind of press out all of the water. This guy is already, it, it's done. So it's nice and kind of meaty and dehydrated already. So it makes it taste a lot more like meat. In addition, they marinated it in a little bit of five spice. So um, the flavor is not overwhelming, like it's not overwhelmingly salty or anything, but it just has kind of the five spice in the background. So it's really nice for like uh, a lot of like beef recipes or soups or noodles etc etc so uh, sometimes they'll sell it in Whole Foods as well so if you don't have an Asian supermarket nearby you can go and get that last one in this bag something unhealthy so uh, after becoming vegan it was increasingly difficult to find ramen in a packet which I very much enjoy 
If I haven't mentioned this before, packaged Asian ramen is like totally superior than anything that you can find in kind of the Western markets. Like they make it really well and the noodles are really good and the spices and the sauces are really good as well. But um, usually they're made with like chicken or, or beef or whatever in the soup base. And the only vegan one that I had been able to find was the, uh, it was a Korean brand and it was in a green packaging. I'll find a picture for you there. But other than that one, I had been kind of shopping around. So I found this, this, it says it's like artificial kind of roast pork thing. Um, it looks pretty good. Like it looks like it has like little pork um, pieces uh, in the thing. But if you look at it in the back, um, the ingredients don't show any pork at all. However, it does have a fair amount of like preservatives and ingredients that I might not know. So I'm not going to totally recommend this, like it's not going to be totally healthy, but I expect it to be pretty good. Um, you know, artificial roasted pork flavor, who wouldn't want that? Next, so my korma recipe has already come out, but when I was filming it and I was shooting photos for it, I really wanted to find like a metal uh, container to put it in so that it would be like more like Indian-esque style and I couldn't find that. So I kind of got this, it was like $3.99 at the um, Asian grocery store and I just thought it would be nice for pictures as I collect my like mounds of plates now. Next, so dessert item. So this is prepared red bean. Basically what this is for, it's for desserts. So like if um, I'm gonna be making like a filled kind of cake or filled pancake soon. So usually like you'll see a lot of these in like Japanese uh, desserts and whatnot. It's really simple to make actually. I mean, the only thing is beans take time, right? You have to soak it because you have to get it softer and then you kind of have to like boil it and boil it and boil it until it gets nice and soft and then you have to add some sugar to it. So it takes time. But I have seen these guys, like this is, this can was $2.99 and that was on average the price, but I've seen like the Korean brands or the Japanese brands for like $6 a can. So the thing is, it is fairly expensive and if you want to just buy some like red azuki beans at the grocery store and then kind of boil it and add a little bit of sugar yourself and you have time, you can totally do that. I was just being a lazy pain in the butt and um, decided to get this. So. This is very, this is like a very dessert heavy uh, little haul. So this is um, grass jelly and it is one of my uh, favorite desserts growing up. It's one of my favorite desserts now uh, and it is weird because uh, it is made from boiling the leaves of a plant that I believe is in the mint family. It's herbally, it's like a little bit slightly, slightly bitter. I would say it's more of like a basic flavor, like a basic alkaline-y. Um, baking soda flavor and what they do is they add a little bit of starch to this they boil down the liquid and then it becomes like this dark brown jelly uh, you, if you guys like like bubble tea or like going to the bubble tea store a lot of times like instead of the tapioca balls I will get this because it's still like kind of like a jelly texture but it's not as heavy as the giant kind of tapioca balls it probably takes some time to really get um, familiar with the flavor and to actually like it but um, it's I would say essentially it's kind of like an herbally jello if I could just kind of make that case. And then usually, um, really simply, we'll just make kind of like a sugar syrup and then mix it in with this, or you can mix it in with like other desserts and just kind of, it will just add kind of that jelly uh, texture to your desserts, um, which Chinese desserts are amazing. Like I know that they use like a lot of beans and like jelly and tofu and whatnot, but it is uh, absolutely amazing. And uh, I will try to find some photos of that because I love going to like Chinese dessert places. They are the best. That is basically all of the weird ingredients for today. Um, I hope that you guys learned a ton. So I'll probably start doing some hauls in like different markets, like maybe like a Korean market or an Indian market. Like maybe you'll, you guys will like that. Um, I probably know less about Indian markets. So if you uh, have any suggestions, let me know. And um, yeah, so I will see you guys um, in the next video. Bye.